Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am making a video today to talk about the coronavirus. I have not discussed it very much here because I have a really different perspective on what's going on and I am not panicking. I am for the most part uh, keeping a very level head about the whole situation and so I wanted to um, share some thoughts and maybe put some people's mind at ease about all this. Now, as you all know, I am a Christian, so I am about to get spiritual on you. And if that is too much for you to handle, now is the time to um, just turn this video off. Just move on. I am a Christian. I'm a woman of God. I believe in scripture. I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. And I'm not afraid to share my beliefs, my thoughts. And um, I believe that scripture is powerful. So that is what I mainly use to um, fight off some of the negative thoughts that I have regarding the virus and how it could affect my family. And so I am basically turning to the word of God and believing that he will uh, take care of me and my family. Now, let me go back <laughs> quite a ways. I know that most of us have watched the movie Moses about uh, Moses and the Isra Israelites and the Pharaoh and the Egyptians and how um, God had Moses take his people out of Egypt, which were the Israelites. And so I'm sure everyone has watched that movie at some point. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the different plagues that were sent down from God to the Egyptian people to convince Pharaoh to let his people go. And I know that was one of the greatest lines, let my people go, uh, that Moses would speak to Pharaoh uh, in order to persuade him to let the Israelites leave Egypt. So I know that one of the plagues was God was going to um, kill the firstborn of both man and animal and it was one of I, I'm not sure in what order they were I haven't looked it up in a while so I'm not sure I did take down some notes but that I did not write down I know that it's probably in the book of Exodus because that is when the um, Israelites left Egypt so God decided to strike down every firstborn in the entire land. So the way that he made it so that his people would not lose their children was he had them take a lamb and slaughter it and they ate the meat, but the blood they put it on the doorposts. And I'm sure a lot of you already know this. It's, it's known as Passover. And the reason why it's Passover is because the angel of death passed over the doors that had the blood on them. So this happened so that the children in those households would not be struck down. And God himself said, when I pass through and I see that blood on the doorposts, I will not strike down that household. So with this whole coronavirus thing going on, I have to believe that the blood of Jesus, Jesus was the ultimate lamb. He was slain for my sins. He died on the cross and he is known as the Lamb of God for a reason because his blood was poured out to cover our sins. So I believe that the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ, is on my doorposts. And as far 
and I'm going to get emotional because I can't believe how good God is to give us those promises in his word. And I know that my house is covered by his blood. And I know that nothing is going to touch us. But let me say this. Should anything happen to me or my family, then I just have to believe that it was our time to go. But I don't believe that it will. I believe that the blood of Jesus is over my entire home. And it's not by chance that my parents are now living with us. They are under his protection because they serve God, I serve God, and there's a scripture, I believe it's in Joshua, that says, choose you this day whom you will serve, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And that is the scripture that I, one of the scriptures that I live by is, this is my home and we serve the Lord and we love the Lord and he loves us and I always tell my husband that I am his favorite not my husband's favorite but God's favorite and he has always been so good to me always you know I, I really shouldn't be here there there have been instances in my life where I have um, almost died and so I know that I am not going anywhere unless it's my time and I believe the same for my husband, my children, my parents. I have a sister-in-law who is expecting a baby in May. And I have to believe that she will be safe and her baby will be safe. She's had several miscarriages and this baby is due in May. So he's almost here. It's a boy. And I think his name is going to be Gabriel. So we're really excited about that. But this is just a very scary time to be having a baby. But I really believe that God is just, he's going to take care of all of us. And I don't like reading gloom and doom posts or watching videos where people are so uncertain about what is going to happen. I'm uncertain too, but when all is said and done, I know that God is going to take care of us. And there's a reason why, you know, um, I Psalm 23, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now, when you are a rod and a staff is uh, two tools used by shepherds to guide their sheep in the direction that they should go. And they are also used to ward off um wild animals that may want to attack their sheep and so they use the rod and the staff for that purpose as well and if this virus is not a wild animal coming to to seek and destroy God's people I don't know what is and I choose to believe that even though these are times when we're all walking through the valley of the shadow of death, we are not to fear anything. Do not fear, for I am with you always. And that is what God says. He is with us. And we should not fear the unknown. We should not fear the valley of the shadow of death because he is guiding our every step. So I trust in that. And I take so much comfort in knowing that God is here with me and my family. We are all healthy right now. My, my husband and my girls are out walking our dogs. We have um, a little chihuahua and she, I believe is, oh my gosh, I think she's like 14 years old. And then we have a border collie greyhound mix. He does figure eights outside every day. And he is about, I want to say he's about seven or eight. And then we have my mom's dog. Um, my dog's names are Romy. She's the Chihuahua. And then Bo is the um, Border Collie mix. And then we have, um, we call her Gina. <laughs> 
she's a Chihuahua mix, and we call her Gina, but her name is a Spanish name because my we're Mexican, and so my parents named her, okay, ready for this? They named her Kirubina. <laughs> Don't try to even say that because I had a hard time. But Kirubina means cherubim in Spanish. And so when we first met Gina, her name was Kirubina, and they called her Kiru for short. <laughs> so Kiru, um, that's what she was named when, when she moved into the house with my parents. And then my husband renamed her, and he named her Gina. So now she's Gina. <laughs> but Gina has PTSD because um, she used to live like a few houses down from my parents. And I guess her owners would take like really long extended vacations and they would leave Gina by herself. And they would tie her up and they would leave like a bowl of food and a bowl of water. But after a few days, she ran out. And my, my mom had a friend who would come over and clean her house. Um, my mother has um, Parkinson's disease. So she has her good days and her bad days. So her friend would come over and help her clean. And her friend is a housekeeper. Um, that's what she does for a living. So she would go to the house where Gina lived and clean that house and she would notice that the dog was by herself, didn't have any water, didn't have any food. And here she was cleaning, cleaning the owner's house, but they didn't leave any instructions for her to take care of the dog. So anyway, she took the dog, okay? And she told the owners that Gina had ran away because these owners didn't love the dog we're not paying attention to the dog. And this housekeeper thought that Gina would be better off going to the pound and maybe she would get adopted out. So she told my mother about Gina and told my mother, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and take her to the pound. These people don't care about her. You know, she's starving. Uh, thankfully, I've been giving her water and I've been giving her food. They didn't leave any instructions for me. So my mother ended up um, taking her in. So to make a long story short, my husband and daughters are walking our three dogs right now. And um, Gina has PTSD because she had been tied up for so long that she cannot stand a leash. And so today, after six months, was the first time they actually took her out. And hopefully they will have luck trying to walk her with a leash because she hates anything around her neck. She thinks she's being punished and she thinks she's being tied up, which she's not. She's being walked. You know, she's going to come back and she's going to be free to do whatever she wants outside. But she panics every time she gets anything around her neck. So they're out there trying. Anyway, so I said all that to say, you know, my family, we're all doing really well. We're all staying healthy. We all have what we need. Uh, my husband and I are working from home right now, and we're hoping that once all this is said and done, that the company we work for will decide to maybe make some of, his, some of their employees permanent uh, working from home, because that would be ideal. Yes, I will be losing my... Um, my nursery, what should have been my nursery uh, studio, but that's okay. If I can work from home, it is so convenient. You know, you get up, take a shower, brush your teeth, put, put on some clean clothes, walk around the corner, and there's the office. So it's just really convenient, and it would be amazing if they were allow, would allow us to um, work from home. So... I know that these are uncertain times, and I know that they can be scary, but if we just remember God's promises, when people were dying left and right for whatever reason, whether it was something that God sent down as judgment and punishment, or if it's just because we live 
in a sinful world. This is a fallen world and we happen to live in it. We have bodies that are prone to sickness and disease and death. We have to live in, in this body that someday will die. But I, we, we have to trust God. Trust Him with everything that we have during this time and believe that everything will be okay. I have a, a brother who passed away. It's going to be um, seven years uh, in April that he died. And he was in the hospital for three months. And there was not one day that went by that I didn't pray he wouldn't die. And I prayed on my knees. God, don't let him die. God, I know that you can raise the dead. You can heal the sick. You know, you can make the blind see and the deaf hear and the mute talk. But it was not his will to heal my brother. So he died. But I believe he's in heaven. And I believe in heaven he woke up one day and he was completely healed from his, his disease. And I trust God with all that I am. And I'm asking everyone to do the same. This is not the time to panic. It is the time to pray and trust God that this is something temporary and it will pass. Um, there's also a story in the Bible about Job. Job was a very righteous man. He, he loved God and he was attacked by the enemy, by the devil. And his family was taken away. His health was taken away. Everything he had was taken away. And when all was said and done, he was still able to say he loved God and he trusted God. And that is what I'm going to hold on to. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord through these times and trust that he knows what he is doing and trust that he has our lives in his hands. I should not be here. I got really sick when I was in my 20s, in my early 20s, about 19 or 20. I went to visit my family in Mexico, and I drank the water. I drank the water right out of the well, which is a no-no. Um, when I came home, I got deathly sick. I was sick for five days. I don't remember any of it. Um, I was probably at death's door and my mom didn't take me to the hospital. They're Mexican. They don't believe in hospitals. They don't believe in doctors. They believe in nursing you back to health at home. So I know that was, God only knows what kind of something I drank that could have gone to my brain and killed me, but it didn't. And as I've shared before, I was in a head-on collision, and that should have killed me. I was not wearing a seatbelt, but God said no. And then when I gave birth to my second daughter, I almost died. I almost bled to death, and that is another story for another time. But... Um, my midwife came in and she said, we almost lost you. So yeah, I have been at death's door, but I'm still here. And that is because God still has a purpose for me. He still has a purpose for my family. Every member of my family is covered by his blood. I believe that, I hold on to that, and that is a proclamation to the world as I sit here. I proclaim that God is my God and that he will protect us through this time. So I hope this, this talk has blessed you and I hope it has given you some hope and some peace. If you have any questions, please let me know. Leave them down below and um, take care of yourselves. Please, I am not giving any medical advice. We all know you shouldn't do that. 
Um, I'm just asking you to please stay safe and follow all of the guidelines that have been put out so that we can keep this thing at bay and stay healthy and stay strong and stay here for our loved ones and our families. So be blessed. I love you all so much and take care of yourself. Bye.